Okay, so this is Claude Code. Think of it as an operating system. It's got inputs, outputs. You know, we can do, we've got a display, we've got memory, we can store workflows as commands. Uh, it's got tools so it can act on the operating system. So like it can, on Linux, it can do bash commands and it, it's got tools to act on the wider world. So like web fetch and stuff like that. And you can install model context protocol, MCP servers to give a wider range of tools. Okay, so you need to think of Claude code as a kind of AI operating system and people are building amazing things with this and it is just the beginning. I, I really cannot explain how exciting this is. So I am on Linux Mint. I suggest if you're stuck in Windows, it's time to get out. Get out of that Windows virtual environment and get Linux and enjoy freedom to do things like this without being stuck in a box. Okay, so um, we're going to go, just going to go to thinking mode. So shift, tab, tab. And plan mode, sorry. And so um, I want you to find the documentation for Claude Code SDK and create a summary context file markdown format. So we're just going to say, how to, we're going to ask it to think about this basically. So plan mode is like a no action, no doing things mode. It's just like thinking what's going to happen. Now I've already approved it to go and read documents from um, Anthropic. So it hasn't asked me for that prompt. I've approved it to already do that. So right now it's going to have a look at, it's done a search and now it's doing a fetch. Okay, so it's got the page 2.3 megabytes. It's going to have a look at some of the other pages that are hanging off of that. So effectively what's happening here, this is like a web scraper. So it's gone to look at the website and it's deciding what information, what links it should follow. I have given it no particular instructions here other than the goal and the starting point for how this should work. So it's still in research mode. Okay, so here's the plan. So it says based on the research of the Claude Code documentation, I'm gonna create a summary context file in Markdown containing overview, installation guide, core features, usage examples, API reference, best practices, and advanced topics. And it's going to be called that. Now, probably what you would do if you were doing this more usefully, you would actually have a folder with separate files, but I wanted this to be a reasonably quick demo. So it's gonna say yes. Now, if you wanted to, you could ask it to think about it again. So you can, there's a couple, you can see this in documentation. There's a couple of different levels of thinking that you can use with Claude Code. So you can say like, think about it, think harder, like extreme think, whatever. And, and so you can, and I, I only really use like think or think harder for like a problem in code that doesn't work properly. And so what, what you have to think about <laughs> is for, for your normal tasks, you do not need to tell it to think. But if you do, you can actually see the thinking block on the page, which is awesome because then you can see if it's starting to make the right decisions and assumptions about a complex problem to solve. And so right now it should be creating um, sub-agent tasks to do this work. And this is a particularly clever part of Claude Code, which is it makes use of agents. So it acts as like an orchestrator mode and it can create a delegated task to a sub-agent mode. The to-do list is a quick way for it. To, it's kind of like a flat file and it can keep track of things. Uh, you, you can probably stack about maybe 30 or so objects, or not objects, like lines in the to-do. Um, over 50 and it might start to drift because that's a long list for it to keep track of. So if we have a look at this file, um, I can open this up. Just hang on a moment. Okay, so this is the file it created and you can see it's pretty like straightforward kind of markdown formatting. It's just got, you know, heading, subheading, that kind of stuff. And so it's put in a, a nice little quick overview. Uh, we've got a, 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 like key capabilities, installation methods, core features. Uh, it's got some command line examples. It's got that TypeScript, Python, the API, like these are like the ways that you use the SDK. Um, API reference, query options, session management, like all basically cool, good stuff, right? Now, the thing is, this is a pretty like basic uh, task. I've, I've done ones like this where I've told it to do a much bigger task and it, you know, you might have to press, like tell it to continue after a while, but um, you can basically, like, I, I, you can run this for like the entire context window. 
right? So I've, I've done tasks like this where we've used the whole like 200,000 token context window and it's awesome. You can build very comprehensive outputs. Uh, so again, just a quick example of like an action on the device, right? So it's pretty simple, like obviously it's like coding, but it's just a file. So you have to imagine uh, it could be a CSV file or whatever. It doesn't have to be a bit of code, like Claude code, yeah, okay, but it's an operating system. It's not just for coding. Okay, let's have another look and see if we can do another example. All right, so next let's just see if we can get uh, Claude code to have a look at the pictures that are in the pictures folder of this computer and we'll see if we can make a kind of assessment of the contents of those pictures and um, and just make a kind of list document for it. So um, let's just we'll go back into think mode, so shift tab. Okay, um, look at the, the images in there and make an assessment of each one and save the details in brief context in a markdown file. All pictures summarized in one file. Okay, so I think that will be enough for this to work, but let's find out. So that's the command. Now it will know that it has to ask permission, right? So I've given it permission now to um, add that to the working folder. So it knows it can go and look at those pictures. And so now it should start to look at the images. And yes, I'm going to let it do that for all of them because I don't want to keep pressing continue. And so at the moment, it's looking at each of these images in turn. And um, it should be pretty quick. They're, they're all around like 100 kilobytes. They're basically like web screenshots and bits and pieces. And there's one like image of me, I think like a webcam. Uh, yeah, it's like a headshot of me. So. Um, there are exactly 16 images to look at. They're all pretty small, except the one of me is two megabytes. So it should be now continuing to look at all the pictures. Like it can make a list and figure out what's going on. Now, at the moment, uh, as of recording, as far as I know, it, it can deal with images and text. So if you wanted to do this with a document or a PDF, you would need to give um, Claude either a, uh, like a, a, an app, like a library on the computer, so like Pandoc or something, or an MCP to do the same, because it has to, like if it was a PDF, it's got to convert it to text and then deal with it. I don't think at the moment Claude can interrogate a PDF. Uh, sure, I'm sure that'll change at some point, but anyway, it sees what it is. Okay, so that's the last or second last picture, I think. That's the one of me, and that's the last one. So, if you think about this, it's kind of like having a little assistant that can run tasks on the computer. And, I mean, I guess the future of operating systems is that this will be built in and will predictively do it, right? Um, so, it's going to make the pictures summary file, happy with that. Um, let's just go and now we're going to get an output here. So you can imagine if this was connected to an MCP, like a, maybe it's connected to a you know, Google Drive or whatever, um, you know, go and make a summary and then save the summary on my computer locally. Um, and this, I guess this is not, I'm not pretending like you couldn't do this other ways by like dragging the pictures into your favorite AI chat. Um, however, the goal in life is not to be the human in the loop on the end of an AI chat. It is to create agents that can do these things by themselves so that maybe you just have to give like one command or like one quick prompt and off it goes. Like we really, the, the goal should not be, can I give myself a job of running an AI? The job is, can I give AI the job of running AI? You know, and, and because you want, to multiply your time. If, you, if you're just doing, like, if you're just sticking to, like, talking to ChatGPT all day, you are massively slow in your workflow compared to what you could possibly do. So let's have a look at the contents of that file. Um, let's open that up. Okay, so here's the summary of the pictures. So um, we've got 
uh, pretty nicely formatted markdown. It's grouped them. So yes, these are five kind of screenshots from like a silly web project. We've got some analytics screenshots. Um, then we've got web application interfaces. Yes, these are some other like, actually that's a WordPress like dashboard interface picture. This is me. And then it's like a summary of the themes and technical context. So you can see like a pretty simple prompt and it's now given me like an entire little summary of what's going on there. Um, it's just, it's just like two quick examples. I mean, so many more things that could be possible, but basically think about this as a way of acting on your computer system and on the world via tools um, and being able to give it natural language requests to complete a task. Right, and so if you had to do this workflow manually, and I know because I've done that last year, like if you had to teach each agent to do these tasks, it, you could be there all day getting it right, and then you've only done it for that one little task. Whereas what's happening here is um, Claude is making this agentic workflow on the fly. Like it's figuring out what you want and how we're gonna get there, does a little plan, and then allocates the tasks to the sub-agents. Um, you could very easily like I'll show you we can turn this into like a future sort of task but um, you can turn that into a slash command inside of Claude code like you can make it a quickly run task just press like slash look at pictures and it will rerun that again in the future um, it's really really cool there's so much you can do with this